Hey everybody, welcome to this week's live stream. <laughs> that was a good start. Uh, welcome to this week's live stream. I'm coughing over here. I uh, hope everybody's doing good today. So we're going to do something a little bit different. This is pretty far from what I normally do. Uh, however, I, I got contacted by the, the company Resiners and they're like, oh, we have this thing that we you know would like to send you. And I looked into it and I actually know about this company. Um, and, and just to, just disclosures and all the disclaimers, this is not a paid promotion or anything like that. They sent me, they did send me a free unit to try out. Um, and I was curious, cause like, I don't really do stuff that would probably, um, you know, where this thing would be like super handy for me. Um, I don't think this is gonna be the greatest thing for like pen blanks, if you're trying to mix colors together and all that stuff. Um, this is not going to take the place of a pressure pot. Um, they, they just work a little bit better. However, um, they, they contacted me and I looked into this little machine and I was just flat out intrigued. I was like, okay, let me, let me try this out. So what this thing is, this is a, what do they call it? The airless bubble removal machine. All right. And uh, basically what it is, it's just a vacuum chamber. And many of you guys that have been around for a while know that I usually, when I'm like, when people ask, oh, should I use vacuum or pressure? I'm always like, just use pressure. However, there are certain circumstances where pressure is not really going to be necessarily the best option, um, especially when you're doing things like crafty things, coasters. Um, this is like a, I don't know, what do they call this thing? A magnifying dome, um, stuff like that, where realistically i don't think that it's best to necessarily pressurize these types of things a lot of times you're you're going to be manipulating it and it's better just to leave the thing sitting on the the desk you know your workspace and let it cure um, outside so in that case what do you do about air bubbles and resin and a lot of times you know resins will um, release air bubbles but the problem is you know when you mix up resin you're introducing, you're, you're adding air into it. When you're pouring it, doing all that stuff, when you agitate the resin, air bubbles just, you know, air gets trapped in there and they form bubbles. And so you have bubbly resin. So what do you do about that? Um, that's what this machine kind of helps with. That's kind of the idea. Um, so what you would do, and the way that I would use this, there's, there's a couple ways you could use this thing. Um, basically, after you're done mixing, then you pop your cup, the mixing cup, into this machine and it sucks the air bubbles out and then you're you know, free to pour it and it's gonna have significantly less air bubbles in it when you're pouring, all right? So now this thing isn't gonna magically get rid of like every single air bubble on the planet and all this stuff. And um, today what I wanna actually use it for, um, and, and this is part of why I was kind of intrigued, um, you guys know that I like using Amazing Clearcast Plus. Um, it's got UV inhibitors in it, but the problem is this is one of those kind of bar top epoxies that's super thick. And that's not very fun. It traps a lot of air bubbles in it the thicker the resin gets and it just doesn't release it. And so a lot of times when you make something out of that, you're gonna see micro air bubbles in the final product, like unless you pressurize it or do something. But again, we're gonna kind of toss out the pen blanks and the typical stuff that I do, um, that's not really what, so I just want to make everybody clear, that's not really the, the intended use or where, where I think this thing would be useful. This is for, for other types of projects, but I think it could be useful and it's a pretty simple um, machine. That's the beauty of it and it's fairly inexpensive. I, I forget, I didn't pay for it. Like I said, they sent me the, the unit for free. Let me go to, I, I can't remember how much this thing costs. Let me go and look it up. Oh, there it is. Uh, and I have a link to it in the, the description if anyone wants to get one. So it's 150, 150 bucks on Amazon. All right, and I'm just, I'll, I'll toss a link in the, the chat here real quick if anybody wants to look at it on, on Amazon. Um, however, so going back to the company, um, I've seen a couple of th th resiners, this company, they've made a few different things. One of the, one of the products that they've come out with is a resin curing machine, which basically just kind of heats up your, your resin, um, you know, like in the mold. So it's kind of cool. You can kind of, you know, like, again, most of this stuff is a little bit more for the kind of crafting resin uh, casting stuff, um, but you could heat this up and then put it in the little, uh, you know, heater machine and it'll help cure it a little bit faster. It's kind of like an oven in the sense. I would actually, I think what it's very similar to is like a, a, a like a dehydrator kind of thing where it kind of heats it up and, and gets rid of, um, you know, the, the 
like humidity, I guess, in there, it dehydrates stuff, but it's similar to something like that. Um, so they have one of those. They have, um, uh, what do you call it? Like kind of like a, like a hair dryer type thing, but it's basically pretty purpose built for doing, you know, when you're, when you're just doing covering, what do you call that? <laughs> like, uh, like resin art type stuff where if you wanted to just kind of blow, you know, like let's say you're making like a beach scene on like a charcuterie board um, and you can kind of blow the, the resin around. They have a, like a hair dryer type thing. So it's a company basically trying to solve problems for resin casters. And that's the only products that they have. And they're very unique products. That's why I kind of, I was like, okay, you know, you can send this thing to me and I'll, I'll, I'll try it out. It's kind of cool. So um, check them out. Like I said, the, the company's name is Resiners. Resiners. Um, they're pretty cool. Uh, you know, and uh, if you guys follow Ben over at Ben's Works, he's actually done a, a video on this, and I think he might have used some of the other things. And then Steve McDonald, he definitely has used the, the resin curing machine thing, the little heater box. Um, he's done a video on this thing as well. So, you know, these other people in the resin casting community, probably more <laughs> suited to doing something with the, these types of things, um, have done some stuff. So go and make sure to, if you are not following Ben over at Ben's Works, so it's, let me, let me drop a link to his channel because he, he does amazing stuff. YouTube, Ben's Works. Get you a link to that and Steve McDonald as well. Um, if you're not following him, he does some really cool stuff. So let me get, I'll probably play something. Let me drop a link. Oh, you can just do at. I forgot about that. We're dropping links left and right, guys. Dropping those links. Uh, and even if you're just like a pen. You know, because like, you know, I'm, I, I mainly do like pin blanks and turning blanks and stuff like that. Um, even if that's what you do, and that's pretty much all you do, you don't do coasters or resin art things or any of that stuff. Um, it's, it's good to follow other resin, like other disciplines of resin casting and kind of see what they make because it can give you, you know, color ideas a lot of times. It can give you technique ideas that you maybe wouldn't have even thought of. Um, additives to, to toss in with resin. Um, a lot of these people do a lot of really cool stuff that, you know, they're not making pen blanks, but you can kind of steal a couple little ideas, you know, like they, they, they give you really good ideas. So if you're not following those types of channels, I, I highly, and there's tons of them out there. There's, there's lots and lots of people that do different stuff with resin. So anyway, uh, let's uh, get going here in a minute. I'm going to see who was here first. Clyde was here first, nice. And then Mark's here, Mike, Lelia, Paul. Yeah, this one should be kind of interesting. I, I Like I said, I don't really do a lot of this stuff, but um, I was kind of also excited because I, it gives me a good excuse to use these uh, Philip Danner coaster molds. And I haven't even used this one yet. This is another Philip Danner um, from Danner Builds. Um, I haven't made a magnifying glass and I thought, I mean, really this project right here is going to tell us how many air bubbles are left because that's the whole point. It's supposed to be optically clear um, to see what's going on. And I have kind of taken a peek over at Ben and, and Steve's channels. They, they did some projects with this. And like I said, it, it's not going to take out 100% of the air bubbles in most cases, but it's going to get you like 90 five percent there and hopefully the rest of them will just kind of leave on their own so let's see here who else is here uh mary crescent city nice is that that's northern california isn't it i'm not fam totally familiar old man rivers here lisa made stone england i haven't heard of that that's cool welcome in art online from italy sweet and Tony's here, CJ. And let's see, I think there was another. I'm going to totally butcher your name. I'm sorry about that. Yaroslav? Is, it, is W like a V? You'll have to tell me. You can watch the stream? Yeah, nice. Well, welcome. I'm glad you made it. Let me know if I totally butchered your name. <laughs> I probably did. I'm sorry. Uh, cool. All right. So, now, and Dennis is here. I missed that. Cool. All right. So what I'm going to do is I got the other camera hooked up. I wanted to, I haven't even unboxed this thing. Now it did come in a bigger box. 
Um, I'm going to switch to this video, this camera over here, camera one, camera two. Um, so let me get all this junk out of the way. So this is how it came. Um, and it's pretty, you know, it's a pretty small package. Now, one thing you're not going to be, you know, degassing like huge amounts of resin with this either. It's, it's just not that big. And if that's the kind of thing that you're trying to do, then you're going to have to go for a full vacuum chamber setup. Um, just to give you an idea, I, I have, this is another reason why this, this machine, you know, I have vacuum chambers, you know, and so it's not like this is solving a huge problem for me necessarily, but just to give you an idea, if you're going to, if you're doing like large amounts of resin then you're going to want to get a full on, you know, vacuum chamber, um, like something like this, like a big one. And then, um, you know, you're going to need to buy a vacuum pump with that. There's some plumbing to do. And that's the whole point of this is it's for smaller types of things. And it's like an all in one, you know, you don't have to go buy a vacuum pump. You don't have to buy another chamber. It's ready to go out of the box for a reasonable price. Now it's not, you know, obviously it's not cheap. I wouldn't say it's super cheap, but um, <clears throat> 150 bucks is a lot cheaper than, you know, spending, I, I don't know how much that, I mean, just that chamber alone was probably like, I don't know, 50 to $100. And then vacuum pumps, they can be a few hundred. So, you know, that's the thing. I'm trying to give you guys the scope of what's going on here with this thing. Um, but if all you're doing is kind of, you know, one pen blank or smaller types of things, then uh, like, I think you could probably fit enough resin to, to do like, a, if you're doing the singles, single blanks, something like this, you know, where you just got a few pen blanks that you want to make. Um, you could do something like this. Again, I don't know that pen blanks is really the greatest way, but if you're just getting into resin casting and want to make pen blanks, you don't have to buy a pressure pot. There are resins that are slower setting that will help, you know, get rid of air bubbles, you know, and if you wanted to kind of dip your toes in, this might actually be a, a decent way to go, um, even for pen blanks and stuff. Where where the the problem with this and where, where the pressure pot really comes in for for pen blanks and things like that where you know we're trying to create mixtures of colors and do all that kind of stuff the problem is you have to wait till the end of the working time when the resin is super thick and this is really not going to fix that problem you know by that time it's already thick and you're pouring it you need to wait you have to do that to keep the colors from bleeding together and so that's why this the pressure pot handles that type of a project a lot better because you just pop it in there and it crushes the air bubbles immediately. You leave it in there till it's set up and your air bubbles are gone. So like I said, the whole time I'm gonna keep trying to kinda, I don't want people to misconstrue why I'm doing this. I'm just curious, I wanna play with it, but it's not necessarily the answer for most things that I, you know, the typical types of turning blanks and things that I do. Um, <clears throat> one other problem with vacuum versus pressure. Um, so, you know, again, these are pressure pots for anybody that doesn't know. And what this does, you're gonna have to hook a, an air compressor up to this and it's, you know, compressing the air. Basically it's shrinking air bubbles. Something like this where, where you're talking vacuum, what it's doing is it's actually the opposite. It's expanding air bubbles and they just eventually pop. All right. But that requires, you know, some time. Um, it's going to take much longer for a vacuum to work and, and, and actually expand those, those air bubbles. And so that's one of the biggest problems. That's actually another test that I want to do. I want to try and use Alumilite Clear Slow, which you only have 12, maybe 12 minutes. It's 80 degrees in the shop right now. So we're talking like 10 minutes of working time until it starts to get hard. This is not going to get the air bubbles out in time, most likely. So you're going to be wanting to use slower setting resins like epoxies and things um, if you're going to use vacuum because it takes a lot longer. The pressure pot, on the other hand, when it gets up to pressure, it's immediately working on that, you know, it's, it's collapsing the bubbles like immediately, instantly. Um, the other issue with vacuum is because it's expanding the bubbles, it tends to like, you wouldn't want to fill your cup to the top, put it under vacuum and then have it suck the air out because what it's going to do is it's going to look like it's foaming up. But what's actually happening is the air bubbles are expanding and creating more mass. So you need to put it in, 
you know, you need to fill your cup maybe halfway and let it have room to do that, to expand. Otherwise, it's just going to overflow out of your cup, okay? So I'm just trying to give you guys a couple, if, if you're new to this idea, <clears throat> some, some thoughts about vacuum versus pressure. All right, so pretty good packaging. This is form-fitting and all that stuff, soft. Uh, and again, this box came in a larger box from Amazon. And get this thing out of here without breaking anything. Here's our little machine. And inside the box, just to let you guys know, we've got a few cups and an AC charger. I mean, there's really not much to this whole thing. There's <laughs> the machine and a plug. Which again is kind of nice if you're just kind of doing smaller projects and all that stuff, going and buying a huge vacuum chamber setup and all that. There's gonna be you're not gonna just pop it out of the box and plug it in. Where's the... Make sure the screen is getting all this stuff. All right, so there's the. I mean, it doesn't get much simpler than that. <laughs> there's, there's a pot and there's the top and a plug. Let me see what the, the comments. It was really close, almost perfect. Yes, awesome. Yeah, with my, my American accent too, it probably made it even worse. <laughs> 20 minutes from the border, nice. The, are, there's fires up there, isn't there? It's been smoky here. Dennis is new to the channel. Nice. Two gallon and five gallon vacuum chambers plus two one gallon. Nice, cool. Yeah, and I, just to let you guys know, I'm I'm definitely no expert <laughs> when it comes to like. Uh, vacuum degassing stuff because I don't do it a lot. Um, I use pressure pots. If if anybody's going to call me an expert on something, that's where you know that's. Let's see, is this where the plug goes? Yeah. Okay, so the plug goes in here. That's where I would be an expert, and and especially for like turning blanks and doing things like that. And so actually, one one quick thing. So I'll just for anybody that doesn't know, um, if you're kind of that's the wrong camera. Uh, if you're new to what I do. This is typically the type of things that I do. I, I, and I, I make and sell pen blanks. Um, and you can um, make a, a, a writing pen out of these things. All right, so something like this. This is all kind of fancy and different. But um, so that's what I normally do. Uh, and I just pour these either in PVC pipes or um, in a silicone mold like this. And you just get a, a round, I've turned this down to, to see what's inside, but um, you just get a round blank and then you can end up turning this on a lathe um, into a, a pen. And there's lots of different ways you can do that. Uh, but I also wanted to mention this pen blank that I was showing you guys. Um, for anybody that's, that has bought my blanks in the past, I, I used to have one called Nebula and that's what this one is. Uh, and I was trying to convert this to a vertical because I used to pour them horizontal in a square mold. Um, and I finally got exactly what I wanted. Um, so these are version 2.0 and I added a little bit of my micro starlight glitter. So it sparkles now. Oh man, I'm super thrilled about these nebulas. So they're available on my website now. Um, there's a link in the description and I'll drop one also for anybody that's excited about the nebulas. I'm pretty, I'm pretty stoked about them. Uh, and I just added the I got the five and a half inch, so like the regular standard size length in right now. Uh, and I just poured some uh, bespoke length, the eight and a halfs. Okay, so we got a little small, oh, yeah, we are on the right camera. Got a small little instructions. And the, the way that this works, and I, like I said, I did kind of do a little bit of sneak peek. I checked out what Ben and Steve did with these things just to kind of see how they work, make sure I'm not just 
a total idiot. Um, basically, what you do is you're going to mix up your resin. You're going to, you know, mix your resin up, put the cup in here, put the top on, and then there's, there's some controls. And basically, you can either set it for five minutes or nine minutes. Um, those are the two options. Now, you can obviously rerun it. Um, but I think in most cases, unless you're right up against the wall, like when we do the test with Illumilite Clear Slow, which that's a, 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 let's just call it Illumilite Clear. That's the short working time, the tw 10 minutes or so. We're definitely not going for nine minutes. We're going to go for the five and see how, we, how it comes out. Um, but you can do nine and you can just reset it. And it tells you, I guess, how much um, vacuum it's pulling. So you just run it for the five or nine minutes, and then when, you, when it's done, there's a little plug, and you just pop this out, and it releases the, the vacuum. All right, so you gotta make sure that that thing's in before you start. So first test that I wanna do. So like I said, this thing's pretty simple. There's not much to it. Um, I think that's the beauty of it. Again, this is not going to be some industrial, you know, strength kind of thing, but um, for, for smaller projects, for doing coasters, for making jewelry, those types of things, um, this is going to be a pretty awesome addition to your lineup to get those bubbles out. And again, especially for projects, if you don't have a pressure pot or it's not really a good project for pressure, then I think this is going to work really well for you. All right, Dave Sloan's here. What's up, man? You're on time. You're, you're good enough. Good enough. Yeah, 40% of the... Yeah. You got to watch out. Uh, that, was, that happened to me the first time I ever tried vacuum because people were saying, oh, you know, vacuum, and, and it takes forever, and it just started overflowing, and I'm like, oh, my God, I think I ruined everything. <laughs> Oh, an ultrasonic bath. That's cool. Yep. Yeah, you need. Yeah, that's one thing. You need a, a lathe to turn the, the the pen blanks. Oh, the ultrasonic. Nice. Yeah, that's another thing. Is like like vibrations can kind of do the same thing. Where it's just it's not removing them. I don't think it's just kind of pushing them up a little bit. It might actually. Uh, like ultrason <clears throat> ultrasonic waves are actually, they may actually kind of break them up. Um, I'm not sure what the science is on that. Um, back in the day, let me show you guys an invention that I came up with. I still have this thing. Um, so back before I had a large pressure pot, I got a, I don't, I don't know if you guys know Kyle Toth. He's a, a woodworker. Um, but he makes tap handles. That was one of the things that he made. And uh, we kind of connected. We actually did a, 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 like a contest type thing, wrong camera, um, a while ago. And he actually um, ordered some tap handles. And I, I came up with this because I couldn't fit this in a pressure pot that I had. And I basically just, this is one of those like, uh, like vibrating sander things, like a palm sander that just kind of vibrates. And I just strapped it to the, this, is, this was the mold for the tap handles. And so the vibration helped get rid of, it didn't get, take care of all the bubbles, but you know, vibration is another way to kind of get rid of bubbles as well. Um, but you know, it, it, it works, vibration alone works so, so. I think ultrasonic cleaner might be <laughs> a better way to go. Okay, so back to the instructions. Is there anything else that I need to, um, minimal instructions here. Yep. Okay. So that's all. There's really nothing else that I don't know about in the instructions. So the first one we're going to do, let's, let's, let's just jump right in. And I think this is the, the best use of this thing. We're going to make a magnifying dome. So let me switch to this camera view of above overhead. This is just basically a dish, a dome. And so when this comes out, you'd flip it over, it'd have a dome and it'll magnify things underneath it. Um, and this is a Philip Danner mold, 
dannerbuilds.com. I got links to their website. They got a ton of molds. Um, they do really good silicone molds. Um, and I haven't actually used this yet. So again, basically we're just going for dead clear. Um, maybe I'll add a little bit of color or something like that just to, just to have a little bit of fun with it. But um, very minimal because I wanna see, you know, we wanna see what's inside, how, how many bubbles are left. Um, so I'm gonna wipe this out with a little denatured alcohol real quick. There's just some little specks of dust and stuff in there. Um, you never wanna, um, you don't wanna use acetone on, on silicone molds, especially something like this where we really need this surface to be like pristine, um, and nice and smooth. So just be kind of careful. Um, a little bit of uh, denatured alcohol is fine, but I just wanna get rid of dust and debris that might be kind of floating around in here. Uh, another thing you can do is just blow it out. I actually already did that. Just uh, take your air, air nozzle and just kind of blow it out, get dust out of it. Um, but you want to kind of be careful with, with molds like this. You know, um, the other issue is th this is probably not the best. Probably would better to use a, a like a microfiber, actually. Something that doesn't have lint, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I just thought of that. I don't know if that's helping at all. Just kind of try and grab any lints that might have come off. All right, so we got our mold nice and clean. We're going to be using a, a loom. This is an Alumalite product, but it's amazing Clearcast Plus. It's an epoxy, and it has some extra UV inhibitors in it um, to, to try and keep things from yellowing longer. Um, you're not going to ever avoid yellowing with, with resins. Um, it's just something that's going to happen eventually. But um, the more UV blockers that it has in it, the better off you are. The longer it's going to stay clear. I need to find a plug. I think I have one somewhere around here. Uh, it's pretty far away. What? Reach. Uh, yeah. It's not ideal. I'm gonna be honest. Let me grab a clamp, clamp this um, thing to the desk so it's not like pulling. I don't want. To, <laughs> I don't want to accidentally tip over the machine or something like that. I'm just gonna. Oh, that thing. Hmm. Where's that going? Oh. Okay. All right, we got power without tipping anything over. I'm gonna switch to this other view so you can kind of see my setup here. That's not the, I keep hitting the wrong button. All right, so I have a little plug there. I got my little pot here. And again, we're gonna be using Amazing Clearcast Plus for this. Uh, this is a thicker viscosity resin off the bat. Now it is 80 degrees in the shop, so it's not as thick as it would be in the winter. Um, that would be even better test. But this one, you can kind of see, I mean, it, it's, it's just, it doesn't just flop around in there. It's not like water, it's more like motor oil. So I think that'll be a good test because the thicker resins tend to hold air bubbles a lot worse. Welsh Piper's here, nice. Ah, shaker table. Yeah, I've seen those things too. That's pretty cool. Ooh, it has a heater too. Yeah, nice. Mold. Uh, yeah, I, he might use Mold Star. I don't like Mold Star. It's so thick. Oh, you went with the Laguna. Nice. Sweet. That's cool. Congratulations. That's awesome. It's a good lathe. Um, like I said, I, I got some time, like actual, I've seen them um, many times because uh, Turner's Warehouse has had them, you know, in their shop uh, for a long time. And so I've seen them kind of, you know, touched it, played with it a little bit, but I never actually got time on one until uh, a few months ago, I went down there to get some, uh, uh, it was kind of like a fun trip, but I was also uh, trying to get some, uh, a little bit of education on metal lathes 
as well as turning bespoke pens. Um, so I kind of did a little, Chad and I did a little kind of, little maker time, little class kind of thing. And uh, I turned, um, let's see, what did I do? I, I guess I turned like half of the pen. I wanted to try their, um, I always forget the names of them, but the, the record power, the bigger record power, they had that there too. And so, uh, but I got time actually turning on that uh, Laguna and I really liked it, uh, the 1216. Cause I, you know, I like my Laguna, but, oh, sorry, that was loud. Uh, most people probably are not gonna be buying the 2436, especially if you're a pen turner. <laughs> Even I didn't need it, but I wanted to buy something that I could do any project that I, you know, cause I, one project I wanna do is a baseball bat and it's just, you know, the bigger the lathe, the easier things are. And it also gives me the option if I ever really wanna get into like big bowl turning and all that stuff, 2436 is gonna, it, it was, I was kind of going for like the last lathe that I'll buy. But the funny thing is now, if you guys listen to a few, when I was doing the, um, the bespoke turning, um, a few months ago, I was like, I kind of want to get a, a smaller lathe again. All right, so let's see how big, the question I have is, I'm not sure how big of a cup will fit in this. That looks like it should fit. So I mean, oh, mm, that's not gonna work. This one's too tall. So let's, I got a, a little bit different one. Let's see here, let's see if this one will fit. It's good to find out, you know, how, how, what, what's the capacity here? What do we got going on? Uh, yeah, that's really not gonna fit either. So we're, we're kind of limited. We're not gonna be using like a quart cup, but um, I'm gonna use a, one of these graduated cups and then dump it off into this. So definitely a 16 ounce cup is gonna work fine. It's pretty close actually. Yeah, that's pretty close. 16 ounce cup. Now, this is a, like a pint mixing cup. It's about 12 ounces. That'll easily fit. So if you had a wider cup that was shorter, you could get a little bit more in there. Uh, you could go probably with a couple of small cups. Let's just see how this goes, yeah. Uh, yeah, those three I think should fit fine. And those are all 10 ounce cups. So I mean, at that point you're, you're, you're gonna get 30 ounces or so of resin in. So that's not bad. Let's try some other things here. Yep, that's not gonna work. Probably go, you could probably squeeze a lot of paper cups in because they can kind of crush down a little, little bit. Uh, that's not working too well. So you're kind of limited. Like I said, this is gonna be for your smaller kind of projects. Smaller amounts of resin. If you have, there's these mixing cups. If you have this size, this is like a eight ounce. You could fit a bunch of those, which is about the same as this. So I guess that may be eight ounce, 24. So anyway, I just wanted to kind of show you what, what to expect. So I think that we're fine. All we need for this project is gonna be, you know, something like this. Um, so let me get my mixing cup ready. I have no clue how many ounces that thing's gonna take, but does it say? Oh, it, oh, see, Philip Danner, he knows. Okay, so it's 10 and a half ounces. Is that it? Huh, okay, so we're gonna mix up 12 just to make sure we got enough. Now this resin is a one-to-one -one by volume resin. We haven't talked about this in a while because I'm usually using um, Alumilite Clear, which is a, a, a weight. Um, but this, you need to measure in a, in a cup like this. So do I have a smaller, I don't, yeah, I do. So we can get away with just using one of them small ones. And when you're doing something dead clear, if you're going for dead clear, I highly recommend go get a brand new cup. That way you're not, there's not little things, dust and little resin particles, you know, cause we like to reuse these things. But if you're going for dead clear, I highly recommend just, just go get a new one. Um, just to make sure you don't get 
particles because that that's the toughest thing about clear castings is it's so easy for dust to just fall in there or you know whatever if there's some junk on the cup and it's and it just sticks out like a sore thumb if you get one dust particle it, it really kind of feels like it just ruins the project so i'm going to mark on this cup oh nice maker yeah maker central is awesome i couldn't i just couldn't swing it this last time Let's see here. So I'm going to mark on my cup. Oh, uh, that's pretty close. I think what we're going to do, actually, I'm going to go the other way because I, I, you kind of need a, a larger cup. So 12, 16, that should be good enough to get in there. But the problem is this is I'm going to be filling this cup to like the brim. So we're just going to go with this one. We're going to mark off six ounces. I'm just giving myself a visual which which grade you know graduation line I'm I'm trying to hit. Make sure you guys can kind of see what's going on here. I'll try and put this here. Yeah, you can see. Okay, so part A, like I said, we're going to fill up to the six ounce line. And when you're doing these, you don't want to be looking at the line from up here at an angle. Try to get your, your eyes down at that line because it's, it's kind of an optical illusion, you know. And you may think that you're at the, the six ounce line, but when you actually get down there, it's, it's not at six ounces. It's kind of off because of that angle. So just double check. You always want to be as accurate as possible when you're measuring just to make sure because some of these resins can be pretty finicky and especially if you're mixing up very small amounts of resin you have to be as accurate as possible because that ratio can be thrown off significantly and if you throw the ratio off too much it won't cure properly let's see here oh yeah they, they supplied cups i forgot about that yeah these guys are kind of small these are like eight ounce. These are also little eight ounce cups, so you could fit probably three of the the cups that they they give you. And again, like I would, the tough thing is you can only it, it it's kind of a, a you can only fill it so far though. Like you can't. So technically, it's not like you're going to put eight ounces in this cup and then stick three of them in there because it'll overflow. So. Like I said, I'm even kind of new to this myself. Like, I got to think about what's kind of going on here. So I think we'll be all right, though, if, if I put it in this cup. So I'm going to mix it in this one, measure and mix in this large one. And then I'm going to dump off, you know, mo all of it, basically, into this other little cup. And that should give me enough room. Might be kind of close, but we'll see. If it overflows, then we'll, we'll know. And I don't need, you know, that, that mold only holds 10 and a half ounces. So I don't need to put the entire 12 ounces in anyway. All right, now I'm not gonna hold back. I'm gonna mix this without worrying about, you know, mixing up the, you know, adding air bubbles in. Um, but let's see if I can get a shot of this. I wanna show you guys just pouring the stuff in. That's the wrong camera. Just pouring it in. See if I can get, it'll show you guys. Um, you know, there's there's already a bunch of bubbles in there. I don't know if you can see all that. I mean, there's not a ton of them, but just pouring the stuff in, that created some air, air bubbles. Now, when you mix it, that's gonna create even more, all right? Because you're just, you're, you're kind of trapping air. Now you can mix extremely slow and that will also reduce the amount of air bubbles. But that's not the idea of what we're doing here today. We're trying to just, willy-nilly this and see how this thing how how it does pulling air out right why not red solo cup <laughs> yep <laughs> gold silicone catching mats i'm not sure what that is
So now, <laughs> you know, we're, we're mixing some bubbles in. And in the winter, this, this specific resin, it's so thick. Um, the, when it's warmer in your shop, liquids tend, you know, like the warmer the liquid is, the less viscous it is, like the thinner viscosity it, it will be. So when it's only 68 degrees in my shop, this stuff is, it, it, I mean, it's so thick that it's tiring on your, your hand, like your, your hand gets tired mixing it. Um, and then another one that's, that, that is kind of a killer is if you use like a paddle mixer, that's going to introduce a ton of bubbles. And so you'll see a lot of the um, a lot of the resin river table folks, people that make the resin river tables, they're they're mixing like a five gallon bucket of resin, right? And so I see a lot of those folks, you know, they use a paddle mixer with a drill. They'll mix it and then they're gonna pop it into a, a vacuum chamber, um, a large vacuum chamber to get rid of most of those bubbles off the bat, so you don't have to wait. Now that resin is gonna you know the resins that they use have hours of working time so it's 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 going to have some time to get rid of bubbles but when you mix it when you agitate it like that there's just typically you're not going to get all the air bubbles out um, if it's something that's transparent you know either clear or a colored transparent color you're going to see bubbles so um, that's where this vacuum you know idea comes in is is after you've mixed it that's where the majority of the air bubbles are going to come from hit that vacuum and then you get rid of them and then when you pour it just try and be you know as careful as possible and you'll bare minimum you're you know you're going to minimize the air bubbles in it if not you know get rid of pretty much all of them because from there once you poured it in um, it should have some time to actually release air bubbles um, naturally, you know, just float out basically. Uh, yeah, so good question, Tony. Oh, I guess I'm not even on a camera. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, that's another, I, that, that was one thing I was going to mention also. Um, you can just stick the entire thing in the mold. Um, you know, st stick the, stick the resin in the mold, stick the mold in the vacuum chamber. Um, and that's a way to do it as well. You can you can do it that way. The reason I'm not doing that yet, uh, number one, I gotta I gotta use it again. Um, but the reason I, the tough thing is sometimes when you're doing these types of projects, you need to be able to manipulate it. Let's say you were trying to like embed things but not let them sink, or you know, which means you're gonna have to like pour a little bit, wait for the resin to really set up then stick things on there and pour more. Like when you're doing multiple things to a, to a mold, uh, which for me is gonna be one of the main reasons why I wouldn't use a pressure pot. Again, to me, pressure is so much easier. If you can get away with just doing whatever you're doing, stick it in the pressure pot, let it, you know, cure. The bubbles are gonna be gone. It's not gonna like overflow or do anything. It doesn't affect the resin at all. You can stick the whole mold in there and it's not like it's gonna, you know, it's compressing it down in, if anything. It's, it's gonna pop those bubbles. It's not making it kind of foam out. So I would rather do that, but there's some, some times where you gotta, you know, manipulate the thing or any really pressure is not the way to go. Um, I don't think I would stick it in there. However, if all you're doing is pouring it in, this would be a good project. Uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not um, saying this isn't a good project. This would be a good project to do that. And I would probably degas the, you know, after mixing the cup, try to degas it, then pour it in, and then put the thing, the mold, into the vacuum chamber afterwards. Uh, and you could technically just let it cure in there um, if you don't want to, you know, if you don't need to use the, the vacuum degasser anymore. Um, the one thing you got to watch out for is like getting it in there and pulling it out. Um, it can slosh around and do some stuff. So sometimes you may just want to just put it on the desk <laughs> don't, and pour the stuff in. But yeah, you could definitely put it in there um, with the, the mold. The only other problem, and this is just kind of a, a weird one. Now, that's not going to happen with these molds, uh, the Danner builds molds. But some molds, if there's air bubbles stuck in the the... Like if they didn't degas the silicone uh, properly, if there was air bubbles actually in the silicone mold itself, you could deform your mold if 
if basically there's an air bubble in there, you put it under the vacuum, it would, it would actually cause the air bubble in your silicone mold to expand. Um, that could be problematic, but that's generally only gonna be a problem if you have bad molds, basically. Um, you know, if the mold wasn't made properly. So, and that's gonna be not particularly likely, you know. All right, I think this is stirred up pretty well. So let's, <clears throat> I'm gonna try to leave, you know, like a little bit in the cup here. See if we can get away with this. Uh, and again, w another thing that I could do in this for this specific mold, uh, you know, uh, project. This one, I you know, I could mix it all up in one cup, or I could do two different cups, and I could you know easily get away with just putting different cups in um, with less amounts in each cup. That would be this would this amount of resin would probably be pretty easy to do that type of a thing with multiple cups. All right, I wanna look at this and just kinda of see if it registers. Yeah, we're looking at one. Okay, so this should be about the right amount of resin. Okay, oh, I already got the thing. Oh, and one other thing to mention, we're gonna be doing a giveaway because they also were like, hey, we'll give you another one <laughs> and you can do a giveaway. And I was like, okay. So I don't know how I'm gonna do that yet. Um, I don't have it in my possession here. It's it's at my at the post office basically. Um, but there's going to be one for for giveaway soon, sometime. All right, so let's. Uh, I'm going to try and see if I can. I'm going to operate this camera a little bit and see if I can get a little zoom going here, so you can see what's happening even better, possibly. Plug my camera back in. There we go. I'm gonna zoom out at first and then I'm gonna turn it on and then I'm gonna zoom it back in. That way you can kind of see what I'm doing here. We got the cup in. You just put the lid on, turn it on. There's an on button. Let me actually do this overhead. Oh. Hold on a minute. <laughs> I pushed the on button and it just started going. So I'm gonna hit off. Oh, that's really dark, what's going on? Okay, so I'll turn it around so it's not upside down for you guys. Hold on a minute, let me, let me redo this plug here. Things are just not working out the way I want. Okay. Okay, so we got our cord. We got our cup inside. Pop that guy on. And then, let's see here. I guess maybe you push mode. I'm going to push on. I'm going to push, there we go, mode to go nine minutes. And then it just starts on its own. It's already going. And on this side, this is like the, the vacuum, the amount of vacuum that it's pulling all right, so I'm gonna put this over here. We're gonna zoom in quickly. I know I need to switch the to the other camera. Uh, I need a cameraman. There we go. It's kind of dark. Sorry about that. I can get a light on it. Perhaps that will help. I'm gonna try and get an even closer view because that doesn't look like it's the greatest view for you guys. I'm not sure if you can see very well in there. It has the, the, 
the bubbles have gone up it's definitely pulling stuff out um, one thing to note about this though you know compared to a normal what I, what I consider like my normal vacuum chambers those things have a lot of vacuum um, it's gonna be a lot more vacuum than this thing so I think that you've got a I, I just don't think that the overflow problem is gonna be nearly as bad with with this thing um, just because like the vacuum level is a little bit lower I don't know if you can see. Can you see? <laughs> How's the view? Yak, what's up? I think that, yeah, it's gone up a little bit. I mean, it's it's starting to get up and it's it's still going actually. So I might, let's, uh, let's see, the thing is, it says 95, whatever this unit, I don't know what unit, measurement unit this is not going up any higher but it is getting kind of it's starting to kind of creep up to the top of the lid there I might have to pause it I don't want to get it all the way to the top it's creeping up guys oh no Yeah, it's definitely, I think we're going to have to pause it. <laughs> um, yeah, I think it's going to overflow. So I'm going to, I'm going to release the Kraken. I'm going to pull the, that's kind of fun. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to release it and we're going to redo this with, let's see here. Is that good? There we go. I just don't want to get resin all over the place in that thing. So let's, let's break it into smaller cups but you can see i mean that's you were asking about how far it went i mean it went up a good amount now i filled this pretty full i, I just i wasn't sure how far it was going to go up so let's dump like half in one of these cups yeah you know, that does and then and a half in here hopefully this will work have enough room for expansion. It was worth a try. All right, let's just, hopefully that's enough resin. So we're gonna put two cups in. Learning as we go, guys, Learn, learning as we go. I'm gonna turn it off, I'm gonna restart it. So you gotta be kinda quick, you gotta make sure you, you turn it on and then hit the AI, you know, the mode. Oh, it's not. I didn't close the hole. Close the hole. Okay. We're going to give it another shot. Try and get this camera to work better for us. Hold on a minute. Sorry. I'm going to tilt it. There we go. That's getting better. All right. How's that view? <laughs> this is kind of fun. This is what I wanted to do. I was like, okay, send me this thing. Hopefully it'll not overflow this time. That'll be great. Oh, I got resin on the outside. Oopsie. I can wipe that up a little bit. Little denatured alcohol fix us right up. Oh, that one's kind of creeping to the top again. Let's see if this one works. <laughs> Let's see here. I might, oh, this is this is a, a clear or what, what what is it? Amazing Clearcast Plus. Oh, 
Let's see here. Bubbles on the oh yeah, that's a good point. I, but I think the thing with that though also is by the time, if you do it the way I was saying is you know pull the bubbles out first, um, you know in the cup and then put it under vacuum to cure. It may not be as bad because you shouldn't have as many bubbles that at that point. So. But yeah, I agree. Like a lot of times with these types of projects, you're going to have more stuff to do um, that is going to kind of lend itself better to not be under pressure the whole time. But, you know, I, I don't know. It, it, you never know. Yeah, no, the bubbles didn't really collapse. Again, this just isn't, it's not exactly the same. I, I don't know what this measurement number is. It's uh, a yeah. KP something. I'm not used to that type of system, whatever, whatever vacuum system that is. KPA. I don't know what that one. I'm just going to type it. This is the vacuum measurement. It might be atmospheres. I don't know. Hmm. Pascal, okay, Pascals. Kilo Pascals. I, that doesn't even make sense because they're talking about pounds per square inch. Um, one other thing that I'm also noticing, this thing vibrates. I don't know if you guys are seeing. So it, it actually is kind of doing what I was saying, you know, like vibration also kind of helps um, wiggle those bubbles through the, you know, up and out. So it's kind of working in two, two different uh, you know, two different ways. I'm not sure if this is going to get all the bubbles out. We only have four minutes left on this. So we might have to run it again. I don't know. I didn't set a timer or anything for <laughs> how long we have with the resin. I'm just going to keep going until it looks like it's good. Yeah, I usually use, um, like on my vacuum pumps and all that kind of stuff, I use uh, HG Mercury, uh, I think is what it is. Yeah. Yeah. And mine usually goes to negative 25 here. So your elevation is going to change how that works. Um, generally, you're not going to get above 30, no matter where you're at, even at sea level. But I'm up in the mountains, so 25 is kind of my max. So again, I don't know exactly how KPA compares to mercury. But it's, you know, like I said, I mean, it's definitely, it's vibrating them. Like this thing significantly vibrates. And you can kind of see the cups like rotating and bouncing around in there. One KPA is 1% 1 of the atmosphere. Uh, so 95. But again, I don't exactly know how that converts to mercury. I know they're walking around in there. But like I said, that's good. Um, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, that's a benefit, you know, for this machine. That's, that's good.
Hobby Lobby measuring cups now. So far it's doing a decent job, but I mean there's definitely still some bubbles in the middle there. And this resin being thicker is kind of putting this a little bit to the test, you know. Um, that's going to be tougher to get rid of than, um, like, say, like liquid diamonds. That's a super thin viscosity resin. This thing would probably knock out bubbles in, in liquid diamonds. And, like, you could probably put it on that five-minute thing. Um, and it would probably be done in five minutes. It's, so it's going to be really interesting. We are going to do Alumalite Clear. Um, so it's, I'm, I'm going to use the slow version, the, you know, the 12 minute or so. We're going to try it out and see how that works um, and just see kind of how it, 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 I don't, I think it's going to be cutting it really close. I'm going to have to not be messing around with different cups and all that. <laughs> you know, I got to get it mixed and then get it in there right away. Um, but we're going to do it and I think you can, I think it'll, I think we'll, you know, the five minutes will be fine. Um, I, I, it's not going to set up in there, I don't think. Um, but I, you know, again, this is not going to be a solution for like pen blanks. If you're trying to make color swirl pen blanks and all that kind of stuff, or like embed objects and all that, I just don't think that that's really going to give you what you want, um, this, this machine. So if that's the type of castings that you're going to be making, go get a pressure pot for sure. But if you're going to do coasters and, you know, half dome magnifying glasses and all that, this isn't a bad idea. So we're almost down, we're down to 20 seconds. So we're gonna run this again. Is it a pla uh, this thing is plastic, yeah. The, the machine is plastic. One KPA is 0.2953. Huh, yeah, okay. So I'm gonna do it again. So can you guys, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna pull it out. I think we got, uh, I gotta pop the. Pop the plug. I think they say to wait like 30 seconds after you release it, but... <laughs> there we go. Um, I mean, it's definitely clearer. But there are some some micro bubbles, let's call them, down in the middle there. I don't know if I'm on camera or not. I don't know if I get. I just I, I can't get in front of the camera. So there's it did a decent job. It's definitely a lot more clear. Let's let's go from the top. I can I can get you a, an over the top view. That might kind of show you, but you know there's definitely bubbles on the top right there, um, but. When you when you really look at it, there's still micro bubbles uh, down in. I don't I don't really think this is going to come up on pick up on camera, uh, but when I look through it, I can see micro bubbles in there. So let's run it one more time. Switch to the other view. I know that it's not particularly exciting staring at this one camera view. <laughs> so sorry about that, but that's what we're doing here. I'm gonna try, hopefully we got enough time for another nine minute run. Like I said, I didn't really measure. Um, now, one thing I wanna show you guys also though, so I don't think there's gonna be a whole lot of excitement going on for a minute here. Um, I'm gonna go, this is, this was not, this was just the mixing cup, right? So just to give you kind of an idea of you know, there's there's definitely now when I'm looking in this one though, there are a ton of micro bubbles in this one, and I don't know if that'll like I don't know if I can actually show that. Yeah, this camera's just not really. It's re like you gotta like look through it, <laughs> unfortunately, to see what I'm talking about. But it's just not very clear in there. Let's see if I. See no it's just it won't it won't focus on it enough but it's it's 
there's a lot of micro bubbles in this cup for sure and you can see I mean it's already you know working on this pulling some bubbles I wonder if I'm gonna try and backlight this I don't know if it's gonna ruin the, the shot but maybe you can kind of see Maybe you can see the bubbles better if I do that. I don't know if you can, I'm not sure if you guys can make out those, the, the little micro bubbles, but there's really not that many. Uh, and, and these, so at this point, these, once you release the pressure or, you know, whatever, um, these things are going to shrink down even smaller. These, these are micro bubbles that have already been expanded that are in the middle there. So yeah, you can, yeah, you can see it. That's a way better shot. Nice. So what is 95 kPa? That's, that's, I guess the question. Tiny bubbles. Let's see here. KPA to, to HG. Okay, here we go. So 0.95. Okay, so that's saying it's about 28. I'm not certain that I... Uh, I'm not, I don't know. I don't know if that thing's reading true. <laughs> I'm going to be honest. Because I can't even pull that at, we're at like 40, 4,300 or 4,500 feet. And I don't even know if that's physically possible. So that thing may just say 95, like no matter where you're at. I'm not sure if that's an accurate reading, basically, or a real-time reading. Now, this cup on this side, that one's getting really clear. Can you see my hand when I do that? No, not really. On, on this side? That one's getting quite clear. The other one's got some way, a little ways to go still. I don't know. Like I said, may not be like the perfect solution for most people, but in a pinch, and I think also if you're not sticking the thickest resin in it, I think that it could work. <laughs> I like to add a little humor. You need to turn the. Uh, I definitely recommend uh, wearing wearing a mask and stuff. Especially, I, I really find like epoxies tend to be, I don't know, for me worse than alumilite clear. So, put on a face mask, turn on, crack a window, and turn a fan on. Do something to make sure that you're not just breathing the fumes from the, the, these epoxies. Now, I don't, I'm not smelling fumes coming out of this machine. It's just I have cups sitting here, you know, um, that. I can smell it. Always protect yourself. I can't wait to do the Alumilite Clear. So in contrast, Alumilite Clear is a urethane resin, which for, for the purposes of this doesn't really matter that much. It's not a big deal, but um, it's quite a bit thinner viscosity but we only have like right now it's 81 degrees probably like 10 minutes of working time so it's going to be kind of interesting to see how that works we got three about 320 three minutes and 15 seconds left this one's not really seeming to do a whole lot on this this on your right it's not changing 
So one thing I don't, you know, I don't know. This resin may start be maybe setting up in there a little bit. I don't, I don't know. If it's getting, you know, hot and thick, then. But they are popping on the top, so I don't, I don't think so. I don't know. The resin in the cup is still liquid, so I don't... The only thing that could possibly happen is under vacuum, the properties could change, possibly. I never inhaled. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Well, okay, so, again, context for, for what we're doing here. I, this is not, I'm not, I do not recommend this if you're trying to make pen blanks, doing color swirl things, like the typical things that I do, I would not use this. Um, not even for a beginner. Um, I would go get a pressure pot and, and do it the way that I normally do things. That's, that's what I, you know, but if you want to make things like coasters, you know, smaller type, oh, that's the wrong camera. Smaller types of pro, oh, that's way zoomed in. I need a camera crew. You know, if you're trying to make like smaller, like art type projects, um, you know, uh, uh, jewelry, I'm trying to think of other types of things that people make or just like resin art type stuff. Um, that's what this is for, for smaller types of projects and for, for a little bit more specific types of things. Um, I, you know, I think it's, it's definitely better than mixing it in a cup and then dumping it in there and hoping that the bubbles go away because they really just don't. Um, um, and that's one of the big things that, you know, people say, um, you know, you can use certain types of resin. Now, if you're doing all that stuff, take one more step and find a thin viscosity resin. That's going to help tremendously. Um, in many cases, you could get away with not even using vacuum on that, on those types of, you know, with, with, with a really thin viscosity resin. But what I find is it looks clear in the cup, but it's these micro bubbles that are really the biggest problem. And so this is definitely gonna help in that case. You know, you're gonna get more of those bubbles. Now they don't even, they don't claim that this is gonna take out 100% of the bubbles. So I don't wanna make, um, make anybody think that. The company doesn't say that. I think they even say it's gonna get rid of like 95% of the bubbles. Um, it's just, it's going to reduce that amount and it's going to give you for, for, again, for t these types of projects, it's going to give you a clearer, um, you know, project in the end, a clearer result. When you have a bunch of bubbles in the, like the micro bubbles, it makes it cloudy. Um, it looks cloudy. So we're going to pop the, pop the plug again. And I think at this point we are, you know, I'm not going to run it again. It doesn't seem like it's really doing a whole lot more to these cups. Got to wait a little bit, I guess. Trying to get it here. <laughs> Come on. There we go. I think they say that you're supposed to wait about 30 seconds. But I mean, these are pretty clear. Uh, you know, I, I, can't, I can't fault this. This thing's, you know, it, it does what it claims. What, it, what, it's, what they're saying that it does, it works fine, you know. Much clearer. Uh, yeah, this resin is starting to get kind of warm. That might also be affecting how much of the, you know, bubbles will come out. So let's, let's just pour these guys in here. Now, one thing that I do want to do, I, I want to add just the tiniest, tiniest amount of color to this. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to pour a little bit off. I mean, a tiny amount of color, okay? And I'm going to put a little bit of color into that thing. But so at this point, all we're doing is we're going to pour this in now again pouring can cause bubbles so we're going to pour this you know carefully let it just kind of run down the side 
This can also help kind of remove bubbles. So there's some bubbles pouring out of this cup. But if you pour kind of carefully, they'll stay kind of on the surface, which then you can pop with a, you know, like a, a lighter torch, you know, whatever. The nice thing about this mold is if even if I don't fill it, you know, because I, I wasn't sure how much resin we, we had some issues with the amount of resin, right? Um, even if it doesn't fill to the top, it really doesn't matter. It's just going to be a shorter dome. So that's that's one kind of nice thing about about this specific mold. I'm pretty excited, though, about this mold. I was waiting for like the perfect time to bust it out. Oh, we got plenty of resin, this is fine. I think that's fine, that's good enough. Now I wanna add a little, I'm talking the tiniest, tiniest amount of color. I don't know what color to put in here. That's the tough part. How about red? I think red is the way to go. So all I'm gonna do, I'm gonna just add like a tiny little, you know, just a drop of red dye. Now the problem is I gotta mix this, which is not gonna help with bubbles, but I'm gonna do it kind of carefully. The good news is I'm not turning into this, so even if some of the dye didn't really get fully mixed in, it doesn't really matter in this case. I mean, frankly, I probably could have just dropped a drop of dye in. If you're not going to cut into it or sand it or anything like that, then you really, it doesn't really matter necessarily if the dye actually mixed fully in. But if you're making a pen blank and you just drop some dye drops in there, you're gonna turn into that and the dye is not gonna be cured. It's gonna be liquid and you're gonna have a mess on your hands. And I'm just gonna add a little bit of fun to this. I don't know. I don't know if this is a good idea or, or what, but I think it'll be kind of cool. Either way, I'm gonna try it out, basically. Now this resin is pretty thick at this point. So it's probably going to be setting up fairly soon. And if I wanted to, I don't think this is going to sink because we're, we're kind of at the end of the working time on this. You can kind of pop bubbles with just a, like a pokey thing sometimes too. What I want to do is kind of bring these down in. Okay, I'm going to quit messing with it. Now, Let's go to the other camera view. I'm trying to keep the middle kind of clear so that we can get the magnifying effect in the middle there. I'm gonna to switch to, oh, that's not a good view. Uh, bear with me guys, don't, don't watch the camera. <laughs> Gotta zoom out and do some stuff here. So what I'm gonna do, I have, I recommend, they sell the torches, I have a torch, like the butane torches. 
I would probably recommend not doing that. Just get yourself one of these lighters. And that way on the surface, you just pop surface bubbles. And the thing is like these butane lighters, they get really hot and what you can do, you're probably not gonna do a whole lot like really ruin the resin necessarily. The problem is those things can really wreck your, your molds, okay? So it's kind of better just to get a little flame. That's the wrong camera again. And just, you know, go in. This is just not even close to as hot and you're not gonna really harm. I mean, don't just sit there and leave the flame on your mold. But you're gonna get your bubbles. But you're just not gonna put as much wear, much damage on that silicone mold. So I can see there's there's a few bubbles down in there, kind of sticking around to the surface, um, which kind of I'm not super thrilled with. They kind of did stick to like the edge of the mold a little bit down in there, but from what I can see so far right now. It just doesn't seem like there's a lot of bubbles in this thing. There are a few, you know, again, that thing didn't get rid of 100% of the bubbles, but didn't claim to either. Pretty cool. So let me stop and, whew. It kind of dissipated. I thought that we were closer to like when it was gonna set up and it, the, the red is kind of not doing exactly, not, not staying where I wanted it. <laughs> All right, let me scroll up and see where we're at. Uh, yeah, it's kind of like a cherry. Yeah, it is. It's okay, but the thing is those butane lighters are, are focusing that heat in like one place and it can really kind of wreck your, your molds. I really highly recommend not doing that. Um, and it's mainly like these little butane. The butane ones, they get really hot. Um, the bigger torches that, that produce kind of a wider flame, if you, it, it's mainly just the heat and the, the, the focus of that heat. Um, these things, generally you're going to work a little bit better for you and you'll you just don't have to worry about you know causing any issues on your molds um I, and i got that tip also from i'm not an expert at any of this stuff i don't do this type of casting typically i, I do it for fun you know like on on, on a random stream like this um, but I've, I've gotten that tip from steve mcdonald and he does a lot of this stuff uh, and, it, and it made sense because I've seen where, you know, especially on your cheaper molds, heat, you know, they say, well, it's good to 440. Well, if you're buying those kind of junky, you know, silicone molds from like Amazon, those things will just get wrecked with, with like a butane torch. Even just the curing of the resin will wreck those things. So um, just kind of be careful. If you're using a really good, you know, decent, uh, you know, material mold, like these, these Danner molds, I mean, really, I don't think I would necessarily wreck them if I used a, a butane lighter um, because they're they're good materials. But I'd rather just not. You know, you can these, this thing works fine. You know, and it kind of gives you a little bit. One one thing that I find is I, I don't want to focus even with this thing. If you're focusing it on the epoxy, it's going to kind of flash cure in in certain areas. So these things are a little bit like hot rods, you know, like they're, they're overpowered a little bit. So, so I'm constantly kind of keeping the flame moving and it just kind of ends up getting all over. I can't really pinpoint and get, it takes me longer, you know, with this thing than, than being able to hover with a slightly lower temperature um, flame, basically. Hope if that made any sense. <laughs> you can do whatever you want with your molds. I, I'm not saying that you, you have to do that, it just, Generally, I would recommend. Actually, I'm going to keep this light here because that backlight um, seemed to work quite well. Yeah, so our resin still isn't setting up. So, what I need to do is get this thing out of the way. Now, oh, one other thing to, to mention 
and I didn't do it. I didn't really think ahead. I'm going to go to this view. Um, what would be a great idea if you're doing these types of molds and you're just going to let it sit out like on the counter to cure, highly recommend find something. Uh, this is actually perfect to cover your, your mold. That way dust doesn't just constantly fall into it. Now I can't do that with this obviously um, because we're going to be using it. Um, but if you can get like one of those like plastic bins or something like that, which I do have some, or like a, a, a mixing cup, I guess that would work. Make sure it's clean. Ooh, yeah, that's not going to work. I'd have to go for like a bucket size. That way you just don't want dust again, especially when you're dealing with things that are dead clear. It's just one dust particle and you're just like, really? <laughs> it just, uh, there's nothing more maddening. Is this thing tall enough? If you got these like little uh, Tupperware tub things, I don't know if this is tall enough. Oh yeah, that's perfect. So something like that, you know, just, just to cover it, make sure that there's, there's no dust particles. Cause you know, some of these things, they, they can be, liquid for i mean 45 minutes some of them hours you know especially on really small things um even a resin like this which typically has like about a 40 minute working time that would typically be at somewhere like 72 degrees fahrenheit um so kind of a lower temperature than here higher the temperature the faster the resin is going to set up um, but for a very small thing, even if it says that it's got a 40 minute working time, there's just not enough heat being generated. So it's going to be open or liquid for even longer, you know, possibly an hour or two. So good thing to cover your stuff up. It's even better if, if you could, if you're doing this indoors, which I, I, I would watch out doing epoxy stuff inside, but if you can be in a less dusty environment than a workshop might be better even. Just make sure to, like I said, have the proper dust, uh, or I mean, uh, what am I trying to say? Face mask stuff. I'm gonna very carefully move this and hopefully not make it do anything. Actually, the red is looking kind of interesting. I think that's gonna be pretty cool. I gotta be very careful though. All right, we made it. Although now I can't cover it. Yeah. It'll be all right. Okay, so now for the real test. Um, the resin that we used, like I said, it was a, a longer working time resin, about 40, 40, 45 minutes, something like that. Um, maybe 30, well, yeah, I mean, I don't know how long that stayed open actually. Quite a while. Um, now we're going to go for Alumilite Clear and just see how that works. Now, I don't necessarily advise that you use Alumilite Clear with this thing, but I want to try it. So we're going to make a coaster out of Alumilite Clear. Let's see here. Been up all night. Nice. Yeah, like resin artists and all that kind of stuff. Um, it's it's definitely not for the type of things that I would do. I'm, like I'm not going to employ this thing for for making pen blanks. It's not not even going to work, especially with the resin that I use, um, because I typically use Alumilite Clear Slow, which has a, a 10 to 12 minute working time. But I'm actually kind of curious to see if this works. Um, Alumilite Clear is notoriously bubbly. Um, you, you flat out have to use a pressure pot with it. It just, there's, even if you stirred it super slow, it, it just, I, I think there's actually some, some products actually have um, like a chemical makeup or, or additives added to them that actually get rid of bubbles. Um, and so I guess, I, I, I'm not a chemist, I don't know exactly, but I, I do believe that there are ways to make resins that actually have things in them 
that try to force out air bubbles. Whereas I think Alumilite Clear has like none of that. So um, you really want to use pressure with it. But let's try and make a coaster and see what we get. I'm going to go for two colors. We're just going to go for kind of a simple, uh, simple coaster. Um, we're going to do half clear, half with a color, um, probably like a pearly color. And it should be kind of fun. Yeah, polyurethanes usually are, you know, like faster setting, like, uh, again, uh, Alumilite clear slow, 10 to 12 minutes. Um, you can find urethanes that are, have a longer working time. And in that case, um, maybe you could get away with no, you know, no pressure, maybe. It may be the, the chemical makeup of polyurethane itself that doesn't lend itself to, you know, that, that tends to keep air bubbles in it. I, I'm not, like I said, I don't know about the chemistry in it. It just, this one definitely pressure it <laughs> is the best way to go. Yeah, I wouldn't recommend using your wife's Pyrex bowls. Although if you're really careful and don't get any epoxy on it, nah, I'm just kidding. All right, let's, let's see here. Uh, yep, there are some risks, mainly for most things with uh, your resins. Um, you can develop an allergy to it in some cases, but you always want to wear protection. You know, it's a chemical. Um, so, you know, it's kind of, sometimes I'm kind of like, what do you expect? <laughs> People are like, what? It's not edible? And I'm like, no. It's a chemical, petrochemical. I got to die all over myself. Um, so well-ventilated area. You guys know the drill. Well-ventilated. Get the, the proper um, organic vapor cartridge filter masks. All that stuff. I'm gonna get some paper towels ready and then we're gonna do some Alumilite clear. So I need to do that really quick. I'm not gonna have time to be kind of showing, you know, every little detail. So right now, before we even start, I'm gonna try and get this camera set up over here so that I can just switch to it and I know that it's pretty good. Put my light on it and just set up the shot now. So I don't have to mess around with that later because there's definitely not enough time to do that. Okay, I think that's good. I'm gonna switch real quick. Uh, I could probably even go in a little bit further. With the zoom. Okay, camera's ready. The light ready. And turn that off so we don't the, the light doesn't die before we start. All right, so we're just going to go with one of these little coasters. I am going to wipe this out. Oh, that's acetone. That's the wrong thing. Where did the alcohol go? There it is. I'm going to kind of wipe this out. That works a lot better. Definitely use a lintless thing. <laughs> Microfiber works great, guys. It's always good to clean out your your coaster. Now we have um, some pretty cool little rock things that I, I never get a chance to use from uh, also from Danner Builds. We got some, so what do you guys want to see? Red? Are these deep enough? Yeah. You guys want to see red? This one's called Tiger's Eye. They're kind of reddish. Or do you want to see blue? Lapis lazuli. Let me know. Let me know. Well, a K95 mask isn't going to do anything for the fumes. 
So you, that's just going to make your face sweat. Um, those work fine, but it all, all that's going to do is pick up dust particles, which resin doesn't give off. So you got to make sure if you're going to put a mask on, make sure to get, you're going to need like a, like a real, you know, a real mask. I'm going to switch views here. You need to get something like this with the organic vapor cartridges. All right. That's the only way to get the fumes out. That's what we're, that's the problem uh, with this stuff. Make sure organic vapor cartridges with a, with a respirator is what you're going to need. Okay. Um, K95s don't do anything for any of the vapors. K95s are great for, for sanding, <laughs> you know, stuff like that. Um, but all that does is it's bigger particles of, you know, dust basically. Yeah, I'm thinking a little bit of blue myself. I think we're going to go with blue. I want to see the blue. We did red in the last one anyway. And there was more blues in the in the chat there. So let's lapis lazuli this. Um, and uh, Danner Builds, again, there's a link in the description to their website. They got all these little rock uh, mineral particle, you know, uh, what, what do you call these things? Little st stones and crystals and all kinds of fun stuff that you can add to projects. So what we're going to do is we're going to just kind of embed a few of these little small guys on the clear side. And I think that lends itself to putting blue on the other side. I'm just separating out some of the smaller ones, make sure that they fit in, you know, like we'll, we'll get covered by the resin. It's kind of fun to add little, you know, little crystals and stones and all these little goodies. So yeah, DannerBuilds.com, they got, they have a ton of molds. Um, they've got all the like coasters and like uh, pyramids and, you know, all those types of things that you've ever seen, but they're handmade by, you know, people in America that are amazing at doing, you know, silicone mold making. They come up with some really cool ideas. One of the coolest things last Christmas, we, we got these molds. I don't know how new these are to their website, but they have these other molds that like you can make, they're, they're like layered, like three dimensional. And so you can just add little resin. You can either paint on like mica powders or something like that, or you can just pour in different areas on the molds. And they have all kinds of different ones like these. These were just kind of Christmas themed ones that I got. But you gotta, you gotta go check out their, their website. It's pretty cool. They do some good work over there. Okay, so Alumilite Clear Slow, urethane resin, 10 minute working time. We are gonna hurry up, mix it up, get it into this vacuum chamber guy, and then we're gonna pour it. So I need, I think what I'm gonna do is, I'm just trying to think about how this is gonna work, because I, I do wanna add color. We're gonna add some ocean blue dye to one of them. So I think we're gonna go with two cups again. We definitely don't need, let's see, how much? The thing about it is I need to mix in the dye, which is gonna add bubbles. So I need to do that in a separate cup before I put it in there. And then the other one's gonna just be clear. So they don't tell you how many, I don't think so. I don't know how many grams these things hold. I'm thinking it's like not much more than like 50 grams, 100 at the most. Um, so we'll mix up a hundred, which would be like, uh, like four ounces at the most. Yeah, I don't think, I think it's more like 50 or so. Um, so we're going to mix up a hundred, but we're going to, split it in half to, you know, uh, two ounces of blue, two ounces of clear. 
we're going to put our little rocks in the clear side and i'm just going to dump them at the same time you'll see and it'll kind of split it half and half but we're going to have our, our rocks already sitting in there so let's do that first i think that's a smart way to go that way i don't have to push something down into the resin and cause more bubbles than there might have been so let's go to the overhead view real quick i'm going to arrange my little rocks Okay, oh, we got one more. Don't forget about that guy. Got our little rocks. And I'm trying to think which cup. I guess I'll just mix it in this one. I'll just burn through two of these cups. Now, before we begin, Alumalite clear is a weight measurement. Okay, so this this kind of throws things off just a little bit um, But basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fill up a cup uh, Here's a little quick tip for you guys if you need You're like, oh, I want four ounces of resin, which means I need to fill the cup to this height What you want to do is fill up your cup maybe Overshoot a little bit, but I think in this case we're overshooting anyway what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill to two ounce this two ounce line with part A. See what the and it's going to be on the scale. I'm going to weigh that how much part A weighs. You know, once I get it to two, it's really hard to explain. <laughs> uh, fill the cup to two ounces. See what it weighs for the part A, and then just add that amount of part B in the same weight. Okay. So <laughs> I don't know if that made any sense. I'm going to zoom out so you guys can kind of see what I'm doing. So we got our cup on the on the scale. We're going to zero it. I have another cup ready, uh, and this is going to be for the blue. But we're just going to get this stuff mixed real quick. And then I'm going to dump off half, basically, add some blue to that, and then we're going to get them in this, this vacuum chamber really quick. Okay, so part A. And I'm just going to fill it up to around the two-ounce line. Pretty close, so about 53 grams. We're gonna add 53, so it's a one-to-one -one by weight. You cannot do this by volume, okay? It will throw off the, the ratio. You need a scale for this specific resin. Alumalite Clear and Alumalite Clear Slow is the version we're using. So 53. Oh, I went over a little bit. So I want to just kind of shore this up with a little bit more part A, because I went over about 2.6. There we go. Close enough. Now we are going to be very quick about this. And you can see it's a much thinner viscosity resin, so I'm thinking that this vacuum will work faster. I'm just not sure if it's gonna how it's gonna work with this one. We'll 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 see. Five minutes, so I, I can only do it for five minutes. Can only run it for five minutes, so I don't know if that's gonna be enough time to get the, the bubbles out or not. But we'll see. That's why we're doing this. Test it out, see what happens. So I'm just going to put a couple drops of the blue in there. Probably didn't even need that much. That's okay. We're going to mix that up. We're going to put our cups in the, the doohickey. And we're going to turn it on. And it's already on the five minute thing, so it's just blinking and it's going to just go. Oh, hold on. Got to close the little hole. Okay. There we go. So we'll let that thing run for five minutes. It'll be good to, good to go. <laughs> They're not absorbent. Yeah, that's true. I need a drink of water. Oh, I gotta turn this light on. 
So we probably aren't going to be able to see a whole lot on the blue, I guess. I didn't think about that either. But Yeah, it's working a lot faster on this. Let's see if I can that stick is kind of in the way. There we go. Wow. Technically, it probably would have been smarter to pull the sticks out, too. Um, because if there's any moisture in the stick, it's going to want to try to suck that out so I would probably get your sticks out before you stick them in the in the machine it's interesting though the blue is a lot foamier on the top I mean the clear there's like almost nothing below that kind of the top foamy area there's like almost no bubbles in that at all. Huh. Interesting. So I'm guessing the dye might have had a little bit, it, it may be having an impact on this a little bit. It could be the stick has moisture in it also. I don't know. Uh, so you guys are seeing bubbles. I, I just looked at the screen and really those are actually kind of just coming off like the stick like they're all surrounding the stick. There's really barely any bubbles anywhere else in this in that cup. So I like I said again, I highly recommend probably take the sticks out before you degas. I didn't really think about this. <clears throat> We got about a minute 50 left. Yeah, I mean, I, this is working pretty darn good. So um, real quick, I'm just gonna show you guys, we're gonna switch to it. There's not a whole lot to look at there necessarily. Um, I'm gonna turn this sideways because I wanna pour what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pour both of them at the same time and hopefully kind of divide this coaster half and half. So I just wanted to kind of show that. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. There we go. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're they're Maybe uh, I, the die. I think I think it's the sticks. I think I think I really should have pulled the sticks out. Yaroslav's also saying that. <laughs> uh, yeah, actually, that's an interesting point, Kim. You probably could do. Um, here, here's the only problem. Yeah, I mean that that it, it would it would be a very. So the way that wood stabilizing works is you kind of have a scale. Like it's it's not a case of is it stabilized or not. It's not a yes or no question. It's how stabilized is it. And so as long as you follow all, if you take all the steps necessary, you're going to get it. There's there's no way to get something 100% stabilized, right? Um, it would basically be plastic <laughs> at that point. Um, so, you know, you're, you're, you're on this kind of sliding scale. And so the more vacuum you can pull, the drier it is, um, all those types of things factor into the stabilization. And the problem is this thing just doesn't really give you a long enough vacuum time. But I mean, really, 
it would be somewhat stabilized. It'd be better than not stabilizing. You know, I, I mean, it, it, it might work for small, thin, thin pieces of wood. I think it could work, honestly. Uh, that, that, that is an interesting question. All right, so we're going to switch. Oh, I guess we're on the already on that thing. Yeah, definitely should have pulled the sticks out before I started because they're serving like no purpose anyway. Our resin has not set up, so we are doing good so far. Uh, the blue is bubbly, though, guys. Um, and again, I mean, it could be the dye. I think it might be also the... the. I think it was the sticks. I think I really screwed up leaving the sticks in. However, the good news is, because it's blue, <laughs> it's not like you can see a lot. And, and this is the other thing with, when we're talking about you know resin bubbles and all these things. I mean, if you can't see them, does it matter? You know, so it kind of depends. And, and how big of a deal are the bubbles, really, you know, if you can see them. Now, I think that if you're going for something dead clear, and it's just riddled with bubbles and there's no clarity, that's a problem. But, you know, a bubble here and there in some kind of, you know, in a pen blank or in, in a project, uh, I don't know. I think sometimes we get a little bit bent out of shape about this stuff, you know, more than we really need to. And in the case of something like a coaster, I mean, I don't know if this is going to be, it's definitely not going to be trans, what I would say transparent. It's going to be maybe translucent on the blue side if light is going through it. Um, but I don't know that that's going to really make any difference, you know, overall. Sometimes you can kind of just there's some kind of weird surface, maybe bubbles, just the way that it was laying on the, the resin was kind of sitting on the, the silicone. If you just kind of give it a little squish. Sometimes that surface tension will kind of leave. I'm going to put my light up here. This may blow you guys out a little bit, but I'm just going to try and see. Like it, it helps me see where the actual little surface bubbles are. Actually, I don't. I don't need that. I've got a, a light above me that I can get. That's pretty clear. It's going to be interesting. I mean, if you asked me before we started, I would have said, yeah, I don't really think that the, even, even if it doesn't cause any issues with the Illumilite Clear, I don't think it's going to work that well. I got to be honest, this isn't particularly bad. Huh. Curious what the temperature of this is right now. Yeah, so it's still liquid. I'm gonna try. There's a little bubble that's like uh, this may screw everything up, but there's a bubble down in here that's really just bugging me. Oh, and I got it. That's a rarity. It was like kind of stuck on that rock and it was just really annoying me, like just wouldn't move. I mean, there's like no bubbles in this, I don't think. Huh. So, <laughs> 
a couple of things that I want to mention. I'll, I'll go back to this. Um, it's going to probably take about five minutes or so for it to like kind of skin over, you know, like hard, kind of harden up. This won't be ready for, um, I don't know. I mean, realistically, I would probably wait overnight to, to pull it out. But you could probably pull it out in like a couple hours, maybe four hours, I would say, this coaster with that resin. Um, but it should be kind of like hardening in about probably five or five or ten minutes hard enough to kind of like where it's rigid in a sense or, or just not gooey um, but what I was gonna say is uh, that first test used a very that's one of the thickest resins that I that I use um, it I, realistically it is the thickest resin that I use personally and so it's going to be much harder and that's why I wanted to do two different tests. Even if the Illumilite clear didn't really work, um, it's at least a thinner viscosity and I didn't have any liquid diamonds on hand. I actually used it all up on, on some stoppers because um, it was kind of getting a little bit old. So I wanted to cast it. So I didn't have any of that on hand. But I think if you were using liquid diamonds with this system, it would work really well. Obviously Illumilite clear, slow, is working pretty darn good. I should really cover this because there's little dust particles, but we got a. I think we got a dust particle or two in there. That kind of stuff. Oh no, that was a bubble. All right, I'm gonna cover it while we're sitting here. So, anyway, so I think if you had the right, you know, not a particularly thick resin, and you're doing these types of projects, I think that this thing is not bad, not too bad. Yeah, I'll definitely post a short of the, the demolding. Um, so the company gave me, they sent another unit. I'm going to keep this one because um, I could have probably done like a giveaway for this one, but they sent me a brand new one in box also for a giveaway. Um, the question is, I'm not sure how, where to do the giveaway, how to do the giveaway yet. Um, I think what we might do is I might do like a video uh and do like the demolding so I, I think that might be the best way to do this is do an actual video shoot a video it'll be a very short video like five minutes at the most and it'll just be demolding and then we'll just do it where you leave a comment in that video and then we'll do a random picker for you know whoever wins that thing i think that's going to be the best way to do this um, but it's pretty cool so uh let's see here um let me let me uh yeah cat yeah so cactus juice is is uh sorry i'm I'm skipping back up into these comments um cactus juice is a stabilizing resin um sold by turntex so you can get it uh, like i said turn turntex or turner's warehouse actually you can get it a lot of places at this point so if there's somewhere that's you know closer or that you like better um you can get it anywhere um but you could maybe get some things, you know, somewhat stabilized, uh, you know, and I've talked to Curtis about it. Um, the vacuum step isn't even necessarily the most important step in the entire process. I, we, we both kind of agreed uh, over my many years using it and talking to, to Casey as well as uh, a couple other people, but even Curtis Seebeck, he's the owner of Turntex, has said that the the you know, so you, you put it under vacuum, suck all the air out, then you reintroduce the pressure and that forces the cactus juice into the cellular structure of the wood. But then you want to let it soak for some set time. And realistically, I think the soaking period is actually more important than the vacuum. So I think for thinner pieces of wood and all that stuff, and as long as you soaked it for longer, I think it could be useful. You know, I don't know. Um, 5% pigment. Yeah, the, the dye might, it wasn't too much dye, but um, I, I honestly, I think the sticks were, that was like probably the problem with that. Why it was, I think one of these sticks was less, had like had some more air and, and stuff in it. Maybe the dye helped a little bit, but anyway. I <laughs> send it to you, yeah. That's funny. Why put the coaster in the pot? Oh, I'm not, it's not in the pressure pot. It's sitting here. I just covered it. 
Let me get some more bubbles out. Oh, I think I was a little too late. Yep. I think it's set up at this point, pretty much. I should have been keeping an eye on it. There's a few little surface bubbles on, that I could have popped, but I'm just going to keep that covered. Uh, so that's a good question, Kim. I think what I'll do is... I think as long as you're willing to pay the shipping, that's fine. I, I, I can do it anywhere. It just the problem is at this point the shipping cost on something like that is going to be pretty expensive. So I think it'll I think it'll just be you know give away as long as you pay the shipping. If you're outside the U.S., then we're good to go. Let's see here. Something happened funny with Tony's. My screen is doing something weird. Yeah, no, I didn't want to put it in the pressure pot. That'd be silly. <laughs> that would kind of negate the whole purpose. Yeah. So yeah, I'm going to do a video uh, probably like next week. Uh, I'll just shoot it real quick. And I'm probably not going to do shorts and all that stuff of, of the demolding because I'm going to do an actual video. So I'll get a video shot demolding these things so we can kind of see what's going on. And the, the, the good thing about that is I can really get good views you know, with, with the better cameras, with good lighting and all that kind of stuff, with good angles and not have to worry about running around and <laughs> resin casting while I'm doing it all. Um, and so we'll get a, a video and then in that like demolding kind of video thing, uh, we'll do like the giveaway um, and then it'll just be, a, you know, leave a comment and say like a word or something. We'll have like a keyword or something like that uh, if you want a chance to win the, the other one. Uh, but like I said, I, you know, this is not for everybody necessarily. I don't think that it's the greatest option for if you're doing just strictly pen blanks and, and turning blanks and the, the typical things that I do on this stream. I don't know that you need to spend 150 bucks on it. I think that money is way better spent on a pressure pot. That's what you would want for the typical things that I do on this channel. However, if you think you might be doing a little bit of like the resin art type stuff, uh, where you're kind of like dumping colors and, and moving them around, you know, making like the beach scenes and stuff on charcuterie boards. You know, you can run your, your resin through the vacuum chamber and then, or, you know, what, the, what is this thing called? Let me, let me call it the, the right name. The Airless. Okay, so I just want to make sure everybody knows. So it's called Resiners is the brand, uh, and it's called the Airless over there somewhere <laughs> there we go the airless so you can run it through the airless um, after you've stirred it up and then you dump it out and you're going to have tr significantly less air bubbles in your you know in the stuff um, we we did some coasters i gotta be honest i was pretty pleasantly surprised at how well this worked with alumilite clear slow but you know keep in mind if you're using alumilite clear slow you're going to have a very small window uh, and it's debatable whether dyes might cause issues. I, I really do think it was the sticks. Take the sticks out before you vacuum it. Um, if you're doing other types of jewelry projects, all those types of things, I think this thing's a good, good, it's better than not doing anything, you know, um, but uh, I think it's very specific for what it would be good for, where things that you're not going to pressurize that would not work well with pressurizing, that you need to pop surface bubbles. Um, that's one of the things. Uh, that's one thing about this. With the coasters, I was saying that coasters don't really lend themselves to the pressure pot in the first place. And one of the big reasons for that is you can put it under pressure, but you're going to get surface bubbles. There's going to be little things on the, on the surface. So it, it just, it doesn't work as well. Um, if you're paying attention, I, I kind of missed a few of those little ones, but you can pop all the bubbles. And that's why a lot of these types of projects are better off not being pressurized, really. They're better off being late, you know, set out on the counter and you can kind of monitor it and, and keep an eye on it. And so if you can pull the air bubbles out of the resin before you pour it, that's why this thing makes some sense for some people. But, you know, there's limits. There's, you know, you can only put so much resin in this thing. Um, and, you know, it, it's, it's only going to go for five or nine minutes. You know, there, there's some limitations with this setup. Um, and if you needed to vacuum degas more resin, then, you know, go buy yourself one of the larger ones with a vacuum pump. It'll do great, too. So...
Uh, let's see here. Doing the same. Yeah, thanks for helping out, Mike. <laughs> I didn't know what that guy was talking about. <laughs> um, let's see here. So doing the same in a vacuum chamber. Uh, so if you can clarify your question a little bit more, Mark, I'm not sure what you mean exactly. Yeah, I was, I was, a, I was just confused by what was happening there for a while. <laughs> uh, I wasn't reading all the, I, I, I didn't see the last ones. Um, so, I don't know, I'm, I don't want to try to answer that question without, I'd rather have Mark ask again. Um, so, one thing, this might be what you were talking about, you could also put the coaster in the, like we could degas it in the cup and then also degas it again, but again, you're still, I think, going to have surface bubbles. Even if you did the vacuum, if you put it in the vacuum chamber, I think you're still going to have issues with the, the, the surface. Um, same thing with the pressure pot. You just, what's happening is you can get some issues with the surface in a pressure pot. And you guys that, that make pen blanks and stuff, if you do like the, the full bricks, you might notice that there's a bunch of little pit, half pit marks on the top. And what that is, is the pressure pot can only collapse an air bubble and once you've released the pressure it goes it, it goes away and so these bubbles are like little surface bubbles can be on you know on the surface and you can have kind of a, a funky surface the only way to get rid of that is to actually literally pop them they can just kind of hang out there create half an indentation and when you release the pressure they come back basically they grow back so that didn't really make a lot of sense, but you can't, I don't think you can get rid of surface bubbles either way, necessarily. Yeah, yeah, you can run Alumilite in a regular vacuum chamber as well. You can do this, it, this all this is, is a vacuum chamber. That's, that's, there's nothing, uh, well, the only other thing is it does tend to vibrate the stuff a little bit, and I don't know if that's just because it's got a motor on it. I don't know if they intended it like it's a I don't know that there's something in there that's actually causing it to vibrate other than just the the pump however it does vibrate a little bit whether that's intentional or not or, or like an added feature um, you're not going to get that vibration but you're going to get the same exact thing so all these resins can be put under vacuum um, just the same way in, in a normal vacuum chamber um, like I said that's all this thing basically is it's just a a kind of super convenient you don't have to buy you know like some vacuum pump and a, and a chamber and all these different things and possibly do plumbing this is a kind of 150 bucks open the box plug it in and suck some air out kind of kind of deal so kind of for like the like i said smaller and kind of intro if you don't want if you're not having to do larger things you don't think you're ever going to really do that then um, you don't need to get a full vacuum setup this thing should do the job nicely for cheaper and easier Yeah, if you already have a vacuum chamber, you can do the exact same thing as, as this. Um, that's all it is. Like I said, it's just a vacuum chamber. Um, it's, I would say, so, you know, if somebody asked me who is this, who should buy this, who would I recommend this to, is somebody that's just getting into resin. You're doing smaller, um, you know, jewelry type items. You want to do some coasters. You maybe want to do some resin art. Um, and you don't want to go buy a vacuum chamber setup. You don't have the room. That's another thing. You know, this thing's pretty compact. I, I mean, it'll store. That's not going to take up a whole lot of space, really, you know. Let me show you what a vacuum chamber setup is going to be. <clears throat> oh, oh. Camera's falling over. Okay. So this is my vacuum pump. <laughs> uh, let's try not to ruin my... And they don't have to necessarily be this big, but they're not much smaller than this. Uh, I'm, I need to... Let me go set up my camera again. It, it was... I almost knocked it over.
Okay. And your, your, the chamber itself can vary. This is a fairly large one and I did that on purpose. Um, because the, I, I already had smaller vacuum chambers, but uh, you can get different size pots and all that, but you know, there's a lot of stuff going on here. Um, and I wanna say that vacuum pumps you know, you're going to spend about uh, probably like 150 bucks on a pump and possibly another 100 on the pot. I'm, I, I can't remember how much this thing actually cost. Um, but, you know, you're going to have some stuff going on and then you probably need to get some hose and do some plumbing type stuff to, to all this. So, you know, it's going to cost you more. This is going to be, you're going to be able to do more stuff with, with a full vacuum setup. If you ever wanted to get into stabilizing, um, then you're going to have to buy that stuff anyway, right? So just kind of depends. I think it's for somebody that's that's going to be working on smaller types of projects. Um, like I said, again, the, the kind of earrings and, and like the crafty type things, coasters, um, smaller amounts of resin. Um, and you just want to get some bubbles out. I think that's who this is really for. <laughs> no, it totally looks like an ice cream maker, doesn't it? <laughs> I mean, I just, I just wanted it because it's so cute. Look at it. Oh, I love you, little airless guy. So it's pretty fun. Like I said, the whole point of me doing this was I was just really curious. I wanted to get my hands on it, try it out and share it with you guys. Um, I, not recommending anybody. I'm not, I'm not saying that, you know, I'm not trying to push it on anybody. I just wanted to share something that I saw. I, I do like, I do like what this company um, makes. Um, you know, like they uh, I said at the beginning, resiners, um, they, they make, they make a, a resin, I'm gonna, again, I'm gonna call it quotes a little bit here, quotation marks. They make a resin curing machine, um, which you could use a toaster oven, <laughs> okay? So, uh, you know, there's other ways to do certain things, but, but they do have, so they have resin casting specific tools, you know, and, and things that they sell that work extremely well for, for the type of people, for the types of projects that these things are made for, they work extremely well. Um, toaster ovens can be kind of a pain like the, the difference between their resin curing machine and a toaster oven is it's going to be less heat and it's going to be it, it's made to do that it's not going to go off the rails where these toaster ovens they heat up super hot and then they drop and then they it's kind of like this crazy up and down thing where this this little uh, curing station it's just going to slightly accelerate the the cure so it doesn't matter I'm not saying you should go buy one of those things either but what they sell, what this company makes, the only things that they make are are meant to solve problems for resin casters. And it's it's that's why I like the company. They're not just selling a bunch of Chinese junk because there's a lot of those, you know, resin casting Chinese companies. They're like, here, here's the all these molds and mica powders and all this junk. They're coming up with unique items, you know, that I that nobody else makes. Um, that solve a certain problem. And that's why I kind of was like, oh, okay, you know, let's let's see what this thing's all about. And plus I was just really curious to see <laughs> how this thing worked. So it's pretty cool. I don't know. Yeah, it's just, just something fun to do. And like I said, make sure to, to if you're interested in these types of projects, um, definitely go and subscribe to Steve McDonald and Ben over at Ben's Works. Steve McDonald does more of, of this, like coasters and jewelry and, and like the kind of crafting type stuff. Ben does very, he does a lot of uh, um, turning projects similar to me, but he also kind of branches out more than I do into the kind of resin art type stuff. Um, so it's pretty cool. Those are two good channels to go in. If you're, if you're not, if you weren't aware of them already, you definitely should. Um, go and follow those guys. They do they do excellent videos as well. And um, if you want to just skip the the, if you're like I need the airless right now, you don't want to wait for the 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 giveaway. Here's a link, Amazon link. That's one of my affiliate links. 
And uh, if you do decide to buy one, I'll get a little bit of a kickback from Amazon, so that's cool. Uh, but we are gonna have a giveaway for the other one. Uh, like I said, it's not even the one I use. They sent me a separate one, it's just at the post office. Gotta go pick that up. So we'll have that video next week. Um, demolding these guys, we'll take a good peek. I'm just kinda taking a peek myself. Uh, we'll take a peek at these things, get them out of the molds and see you know, how clear are they, how many air bubbles. Um, and it should be cool. And we'll do the giveaway. It'll be a comments giveaway. I'll let you know, you know, in that video exactly how to how to get in on it. 95 and up for, yeah, Harbor Freight. Um, so, you know, I mean, yeah. Yeah. It can get expensive depending on what you're doing, depending on how it is. But now, for other people, if you're thinking about getting into stabilizing, if you want to be able to vacuum, you know, to vacuum degas um, silicones, uh, which actually you could probably degas silicone in that thing, smaller amounts, but you probably could do that as well. So that's another thing it could do. But if you're doing things larger, um, then you know, just go out and you know, you might want to do stabilizing. You might want to get into making your own, like you know pen blank molds, like you're not gonna be able to degas this much silicone in that thing, there's no way. Um, so depending on the scale of things, you may just go out and get yourself a full on vacuum setup uh, to do larger stuff. But if you're just doing small things, that thing will work pretty good. You're already sub, oh nice, Mark just followed, cool. Yeah, caps off. Make sure you take the caps off. Caps off of what? I'm not sure what the caps are. I'm not sure what the caps are <laughs> before I pop the vacuum on. Uh, but anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this. It was just kind of fun. Like I said, I just wanted to kind of play around, see what this thing could do share it with you guys and have a little bit of fun. So uh, next week we'll have a little bit of a video and then next Saturday, um, so this, that's not gonna take the place of next Saturday's stream. We'll do some streaming stuff. I got a couple different ideas actually. Um, some of which, uh, I have some just ideas on, on playing with different ideas with micas. Um, how to, like different, if you put these two things together, so that might be one of them. Uh, but I also have some 3D prints that I need to do some uh, casting with. So. Got a couple different no, back to normal type of, you know, pen blanks and, and that kind of stuff next week. Uh, and then be looking in the middle of the week for that video. So anyway, guys, I hope you have a great evening. I hope you had fun watching this, you know, little little experiment with the, the airless. Uh, and again, if you want to go and check out um, uh, resiners, they have a couple different supplies. If you're into doing um, resin art type projects, they have some pretty cool stuff that they sell. So go and check them out they're on you, you can find them on amazon and all that but anyway guys i hope you have a great rest of the weekend and i will see you guys in that next week's video as and good luck to everybody on the giveaway and then uh i will see you guys on next week's stream so have a great evening and i'll see you guys on the next one